Good morning. Good morning. We're live. Let's start the recorder. We have uh, six sentences this morning, um, all female by circumstance. And uh, thank you for being here. One defendant is here. We may bring her in momentarily. I don't have anything for Harlan. She's the one that's in. I think it was uh, a ticket only, probably. It was a ticket only. And then the other one looks like an ordinance from Three Rivers for Condi. Yes. But I do have reports and everything on the other ones. All right. Well, today is Monday, the 29th of March. We usually start Mondays at 11 with misdemeanor sentences, which we will do here momentarily. Give me a moment here. I'll bring Miss Harlan in. Is she not represented? No. I'd be safer to wait. We'll get in the middle of this and other people will be logging in. Here they are now. Yeah, we've got a phone number. Let's see who this is. Good morning. This is Judge Middleton. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Who am I speaking with? Ms. Deet Condi, Mr. Milton, I don't have um I don't have video on my phone. It's broke. Okay. I tried, so it's well, I recognize your voice. Ms. Deet Condi. Yes. All right, stay right where you are. I'm going to bring some more people in here. I okay. have to bring them one by one. So you just stay where you are. I'm going to bring in two iPhones. Okay. Good morning. Who am I speaking with? Miss iPhone. Oh, is oh, okay. That's me. Uh, Ashton Miller. All right, Miss Miller. Do you have the ability to do video? Yes, I'm trying. There it is. Start video. Okay. All right, very good. Let me give you your name. Good morning to you. Good morning. How are you? Good. For a Monday, I'm doing just fine. All right, stay where we are, Ms. Miller. I've got to bring in, uh, well, I lost another iPhone. I've got Mr. George and Mr. Gibson. And... Uh, Tori Harlan is still struggling to connect. Good morning, Paul. Good morning, Tim. Good morning, Your Honor. Deborah is with us. 
Miss Miller, we are in court in a proceeding, so if you put your drink down. Sorry, my bad. Well, yeah. we're waiting to get a couple other people in here. Miss Harlan is getting. Yeah. Miss Harlan, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, can you hear me? Yes, do you have video? Uh, yeah, one second. You'll never leave Harlan alive. What? <laughs> That's from Justified. Uh, oh. Harlan County, Kentucky. I keep trying to let it and it won't. I'm pushing start video. It says allow Zoom to access. I push OK and it won't do it. All right, well, stay right where you are. Yeah, it's not working. OK, well, I can hear you. That's something. You know how to make it work? Sure. No, it's it, you gotta click right there. Look, the start video. Your Honor. Yes, sir. Could I go into a breakout room with Miss Amanda, please? Yes. Yeah. In the settings. Uh, Echo, can you hear me? Me. Yes. Yes, I can. Oh. No, I'm asking for Echo Hominga. Oh, okay. that was the name. Yes, I can hear you. All right, I'm going to put you in a private uh, room so you can discuss this with your lawyer, Mr. George. Okay? Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. you got to go into, like, your actual settings on the phone and do it. Terry Mountain is waiting to join. Did you mean to put me into a breakout room or not? The ones I didn't check. I think you, know, you hit everybody. I just ignored it, but I think you threw everybody into the breakout room. Well, how are things in the breakout room? All right. I've got Chad from another galaxy here in a minute. It's going to take me 40 seconds to close this room out. Yeah, I can't get you to use that iPhone. Twenty seconds. Let's try again. And I hit assign automatically and then it just took off. All right, Echo Hominga and Tim George will be going into a private space to talk. Good morning, Mr. Felt. Now, I've got Chad's Galaxy S10. I'm not sure who this is. I unmuted my mic, Your Honor. Good morning. Good morning. That would be Amber for Deuce. Yes, hi. Good morning. Good morning. All right, I've got Tori Harlan once again, and I've got Stephanie Miller. Oh, Tori, I can see you now. Okay. You're sideways, but I can see you. There we go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Am I right side up? Yep, we figured this out. Okay, very good. Um, 
Stephanie Miller, I'm not sure which case she's here on. She may be the complainant in one of these matters. Mr. Felt, I think we'll start with your case, which is Ashton Miller. Ms. Davis is here. Now, I lost... Oh, that's Ms. Aminga. Uh, Ms. Miller, good morning to you. Good morning. Um, your lawyer, Mr. Felt, is here. You were charged mm -hmm. with domestic assault in this file, which is 201559. You were charged with assaulting Clay Sean Hope. Mr. Felt and the previous prosecutor worked out an agreement whereby you were going to do anger management for a dismissal, that it was going to be done up front. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Felt, what's the status here? Well, I think bottom line, it didn't work, Your Honor. I'm going to tell Your Honor, I implored my client, implored her to make this happen. I even looked that word up, Judge, to make sure I was using it properly here. <laughs> I can't emphasize how, um, how, how firmly I spoke to her about making this happen so that there would be both a good outcome for her personally, <clears throat> as well as a happy outcome with this criminal proceeding. But unfortunately it didn't happen. Uh, I can tell you the good news is she's living in independently in Indiana Goshen, I think still, am I right Ashton? No, um, that actually didn't work out. My uh, old roommate, he uh, he was a bad uh, energy to have around, a very, very bad energy to have around, and I needed to get out of that living situation. So now I'm living uh, in Mishawaka, same job. Uh, um, okay, but at yeah. least in, in in at least in the uh, still in the Indiana area, yes. and your, your honor, she's gainfully employed and very diligent in that regard the problem is it interfered with her compliance with what was expected of her so i'm just going to say it didn't happen i'll let her i'll have to defer to her to explain to the court why we are where we are all right miss miller what happened this was somewhat of an unusual plea agreement mr phil yeah sort of pulled a rabbit out of a hat to make this happen. Right. Uh, then he says, you didn't hold up your end of the deal. Yeah. Um, so what can you tell me? Um, basically, <clears throat> I, I live at work. Um, my job is cleaning up plants, and uh, I'm about the only person that knows how to run every single department at this one plant uh, over at Keystone. Um, on average, we work about 3.30 to 5, 6 o'clock at night. If I were to leave, that line would shut down because I'm the only one to know the other side. We are just now getting the plant together. Um, but I, I can tell you, that plant is my therapy. I, I've, I've learned a lot, and I know that it's not what you guys had asked, and I understand that. So whatever decision you have to make, it's fine. Um, I, I already know I came to terms with the consequences, but I, I'm proud of my personal growth. Personally, I've surprised myself. Um, and they did say that if you guys did need to contact uh, to get hours, you're more than welcome to. Um, but yeah, putting this plan together and still maintaining my job and, and elevating in this, this place, because I would like to make it into a career um, it, it's a little bit more important to me personally. The judge, I was not ad, abdicating in terms of my responsibility to advocate. It, and I do want to make it clear. Quit using all these big words, implore, abdicate, 
advocate? Well, their words have, what, what was it? Was it Cindy Lauper said words have true meaning? Judge, you're an old rocker. I think I'm right on that. <laughs> but the point there is the noncompliance is not due to her. Here comes some more abject and dismal failure and irresponsibility. It's, it's her diligence, and she is concerned about her own well-being and improvement. And my point there was I really think she was better able to explain that to you in her own words rather than me throwing a bunch of words at you and you laughing about it. I, I simply say to you, she's responsible. She's made great gains and improvement. <clears throat> We're asking the court to consider her to be in quasi compliance with what was expected of her and defer or dismiss the case accordingly. But as she said, we're here for whatever you decide, Your Honor. If, if, if the court would make a left turn and decide to jail her, we'd certainly ask for work release because she's just said she's got the most important job she'll probably ever have. We'd like to keep that. But again, we're asking for the court to consider to be in substantial compliance. That's all I have, Your Honor. Well, all I know is really what she told me, and I don't know whether she's in compliance or not. She hasn't gotten in any more trouble. Certainly, this was not a great relationship. Uh, I think Mr. Hope had two girlfriends going at the same time, and um, I had some communication with him in some other cases, and he was with someone else, um, and I'm not sure what this was, but I'm disappointed because you got this superior plea offer from the prosecutor, and then she didn't do any of the things she was supposed to do. She certainly doesn't merit a dismissal. But I don't know what to do. Um, Ms. Davis, do you have any input on this? Well, um, I'm done looking up the words that Jay was using. I think I know <laughs> what he said now. Uh, but in, in all seriousness, I mean, obviously, with domestic violence cases, our goal <laughs> is to have the person rehabilitated to take care of the issues that maybe led to the arguments and, uh, and what occurred here. I, I looked at this case, this was not my case originally. Uh, so, and I don't have a whole lot of notes to go off of, of why they agreed to do this deferred sentence versus just simply putting her on a probation and having her attend anger management or something like that. Uh, the facts of the case aren't uh, terribly shocking or bad. Uh, it certainly was not an ideal situation, but nobody was injured. Um, looking at the the statement from Ms. Miller herself, it appears that she had some medication that she was supposed to be taking that she had not been taking uh, that probably contributed to, uh, you know, getting more mad than what she maybe would have on, on a given day. That being said, we certainly cannot reward the behavior of not completing the counseling like we asked uh, by dismissing, certainly if she has the ability to ask to expunge it in the future or something like that, that is an option. Um, I guess at this point, if she were willing to do the anger management deferral probation, like what we typically do, um, I would not stand in the way of her completing that to get this off of her record. Uh, but other than that, I would simply ask the court to impose fines and costs. I don't think that jail time is warranted in this particular matter. Uh, and I am happy for her that she's found some personal growth outside of our typical counseling. Uh, but again, this is all just self-reporting and uh, I have no way to verify it. So I would prefer okay. that she be completing the anger management class uh, or the DV class in order to have this taken off her record. Thank you. And judge, if I could just respond, <clears throat> the, the trouble we had with that premise was her schedule lends itself less well to compliance and participation in that program and successfully completing it. <clears throat> I'm, I'm, you know, she was not optimistic that she would be able to. Now, <clears throat> so I don't know where that puts us with with this observation that is not doesn't necessarily promote a settlement it probably only compounds the problem 
<clears throat> to begin with, this settlement reflects what I represent to counsel in the court as being a very, very triable case, which I don't want to get into. I'm trying to get it settled. I had a great settlement, but I simply say it reflected a very, I think, a difficult case for the prosecutor in terms of triability because this was, in fact, a mutual combat situation with a victim who has a, some prior history in that regard, too. So my client, you know, I guess I'm not supposed to present my client as a victim and beat up the other guy, but <clears throat> this was a mutual combat situation. And I think both sides were culpable. And if it simply comes down to a trial against her, you know, that guy may be in handling a very tribal case in which, in which case the very likelihood of an acquittal doesn't really meet anybody's concerns. You know, so maybe I should have backed up and proposed a disturbing the peace, if you will, or disorderly or something like that. But what we had was a very sensible agreement that met the concerns of both sides. We have gotten there, so now where do we go? Miss Miller, you wanted to say something else? Um, yeah, I I don't really know how you guys handle things. Um, I I did think about, you know, I didn't think you guys would just let me off the hook with it because, you know, I, I still have to follow suit. Um, but um, I know maybe if you guys would offer weekends, I don't know if you guys do that. I generally don't work Saturdays anymore. Um, is, is that something that... Ms. Miller, the prosecutor is not asking for any additional jail time. I'm oh. simply give you a fine, but this domestic violence charge is going to go on your record. Mr. Right. Felt, are you asking to withdraw the plea? Well, I guess obtusely or indirectly, you know, maybe it needs to get set, reset for a pretrial. Uh, I'm not very happy about that. You made a great plea offer. She didn't do anything she was supposed to do. A bunch of time has passed. And now she says, I want to withdraw my plea. Uh, I don't... Well, we the, the reason the plea failed is because she failed. She got a very generous offer and she didn't follow up on it. And now she says, I didn't follow up on it, so I want to withdraw my plea. I'm not inclined to allow it. So are you asking for it formally or um, too slow? No. No. Right. I'm proposing as a possible settlement or a possible resolution to simply reset it for a pretrial. If, if your translation, I'm not translating that to a formal request to withdraw the plea. Right. My understanding, this wasn't just a plea under advisement. It was a plea that was taken and then a deferred sentencing. So, correct. And I think know. that's correct, Counselor. Right. One day in jail, correct. a $100 fine, a $75 crime victim's rights fee, and a $50 state minimum fee. I'm not going to try to do a probation because you've done such a poor job at this. <laughs> but... The prosecutor's not asking for any additional jail. Mr. Felt alluded to some of the issues in the case, and I'm aware of some of them. I've met you before. I know him, Mr. Hope, since he was in eighth grade. Um, and his other relationship and a fine is sufficient. The only problem is this is going to go on your record. Right. You have 30 days to pay that. You're working lots of hours, so you should be able to pay this by May 1st. Yeah. Or four days in jail. The goal was, now, Mr. Felt, would you email me her correct address? Yes, sir, I will. As soon as I, and would you likewise, Ashton, email your address to me and I'll forward it, please? Copy that. Do that immediately after the hearing. Copy. All right, we'll send you the notice regarding the fine. You're not doing any additional jail time, but this will show as a domestic violence conviction on your criminal Copy. history. All right, Ms. Miller. Um, go and live your life in Indiana and uh, hope All right. work out for you. All right. Thank you. Go. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Jay. Thank you, Madam Prosecutor. Welcome, Jay. 
All right, now, um, Ms. Harlan's unrepresented. Ms. Condi is unrepresented. Amber has Paul Gibson. And Tim, are you ready on uh, Heminga? Yes, sir. All right. Um, then we'll do Ms. Ferduce with Mr. George. Oh, there he is. Uh, this is file 21115FY, People versus Echo Heminga. And uh, she was charged with obstruction of justice for lying to the police about who she was. This is quite a convoluted plea uh, affidavit. Um, she pled to a misdemeanor charge. Wait a minute. Have we entered the plea yet, Tim? Yes, we did, Your Honor. I'm trying to read my notes. We entered the plea on February 8th and set it for sentencing today. No, Pokey. He's in court. Turn it off. Thank you. I didn't end up in the ROA. Uh, I guess she pled to giving false information to a police officer, and the matter was set for sentencing today. I did get the affidavit. Um, false information to a police officer is a misdemeanor as opposed to obstruction of justice. I can't right now remember what the PEC code is. I'll have to look that up. Ms. Davis, if you could help me. Um, and just for clarification, she pled to attempt RNO. Was it attempt RNO? Yes, sir. Well, there's no notes in the ROA, and my note says, call, I called and woke her up. Uh, gave false information to police all right attempt our own um mr george what would you like me to know well thank you, your honor and you know as the court's already touched on i mean this is kind of a it's just a situation where my client obviously acknowledges she didn't make a wise choice um, she was in the car with a number of individuals that came into contact with the police and she gave a false name because she had warrants for her arrest um, in the meantime, she has taken care of those warrants. She has taken care of uh, the issues that uh, were hanging out there in front of this court. My understanding is she reports that um, outside of some uh, fines that she's still paying off, um, there's no other criminal case that's hanging out there. So I'd applaud my client for taking care of that and making sure that you know something like this isn't going to happen. Um, she's currently uh, living with her aunt. Um, she's on SSI and is looking for her own independent housing and employment. And I think the one thing she said to me that's most important is, you know, I just need to get out of this area to get away from the people that I was hanging out with. Because obviously it wasn't putting her, you know, in a situation where she was making good decisions and they weren't helping her to get where she wants to be. So I know that she's embarrassed about this, but, um, you know, I, I'm happy that she was able to take care of the issues uh, that were underlying that got her into the situation. And she'd like to just get this taken care of and move forward. And, you know, as your honor knows, I mean, this isn't the crime of the century here. Obviously she knows that, you know, she can't just give a false name to the officers to avoid the warrant. But I think that um, the nature of the action is why the prosecutor's office did give the offer uh, to a reduced misdemeanor charge from a five-year felony. So um, I think that fines and costs are appropriate in this case, your honor. My client did do one day in jail. Um, obviously, like I said, she's looking to, um, take whatever sentence of the court today and just move forward with her life. But based on her uh, current circumstance, we would ask that the court keep any type of discretionary fine and costs as low as possible. Obviously, the court does have statutory uh, obligations. Well, she isn't paying her other fines. She's on a payment plan right now on a use of meth. She owes $125 or two days, and she never paid that. She oh, also... Oh was on a payment plan on another case and she was to pay $250 or five days in jail and she didn't pay that. Yeah, I think she last made a payment in December. 
So she's got two oh, cases money. paid fines and costs. Echo? Yes. Ms. Amiga? Uh, what do you want me to know? As Mr. George says, you lied to the police because you didn't want to get arrested. You gave them sort of a half-baked version of your own name, and the guy that was with you also was lying to the police, and he got arrested. Mm -hmm. um, there was indicia of maybe meth use in the car. Um, you got fines and costs to pay now that you're not paying. How do I know that you'll pay this? Because I will. I didn't get the stimulus check yet. I'm waiting on it. Then when I get it, all my fines will be paid off. But I only get one check once a month. I lost the place that I was in White Pigeon. So now I live with my aunt. But Mr. George, would you send me her address? Yes, I will send it to you, Your Honor. Well, all right. Um, this was dumb. Uh, not, and the car was parked in the middle of the road. I don't know what you were doing, but it raised suspicions for the officers. You weren't really doing anything nefarious, but then you lied to them because you didn't want to get arrested, and it turned out you got arrested anyway. Uh, Ms. Davis, uh, what's your opinion here? Well, Your Honor, this could have been avoided completely. Uh, you know, her underlying case for the felony, I think it was like she's stolen a purse or something. And so there was a warrant hanging out there for several months. Um, you know, it's frustrating for the officers who are not sure what they're getting into when you're knocking on a window of a car parked in the middle of the road in the middle of the night uh, with three people in it and, and you're by yourself. So the simple thing to do is to cooperate tell them your name and face the consequences of the fact that you have a warrant. So uh, it is, you know, a message that needs to be sent that it, it's, it's not okay to give a false name to the police. And we've had people give false names where they end up having a warrant for the person whose name they gave. So uh, um, yeah, that we've had several situations recently where they gave their sister's name and then the sister gets arrested and the sister gets something on the criminal history and it's very hard to unscramble that. Here she just gave a, a made up a version of her own name. I don't think it was a real person. Well, and I guess the other thing that strikes me is then when she did finally, I think after the third or fourth time, the officer came back to the car asking her, she didn't give her actual birth date. It was a few days off. So it just... She's got a history of theft crimes, obviously having some issues with being honest. And you know, I feel for her being that she's receiving some sort of an SSI check and it's only once per month, but uh, she's going to have to to get it together and be able to pay her fines and costs. Um, and otherwise, maybe a few days in jail uh, will be a reminder that you, you must cooperate uh, when you're well, asked to I could wipe. Question. I could wipe out all the fines that she owes if she was to pay 250 or five days in jail. And I think maybe she paid a little on that. Echo, do you want to just go to jail and wipe out all your fines? No, I did not need, want to go to jail. Uh, all right, well, then how about if you pay the fines that I order you to pay? And I get, I, I get you a low monthly payment and you didn't make any payment. You got enough money to dye your hair pink, you ought to be able to pay your fine. Um, the, uh, I'm concerned about that. Um, the hair dye is not mine. I didn't pay for it. My aunt did. And two, I just got my paperwork from Social Security because I had to fill it out. And plus, I'm not like my ex anymore, so it was really hard for me to get my mail. Everything had to get forward. Did you file a tax return last year? That's a prerequisite to getting the stimulus check. Yes, I filed my taxes. Okay, well, good. That may mean that you're going to get a stimulus check and you can use some of it. I'm surprised you haven't received it yet. Um, do you have a bank account? Um, yes, I go through. Well, they said that they sent it automatically to your Social Security account. It automatically goes on your cart. They said well, that you I, haven't, got, you haven't, haven't got the stimulus it. check yet? Nope, I didn't get the second one. Well, I'm going to give you a fine and a date, and if you don't pay it, I'm just going to put you in jail and wipe out all of your unpaid fines, which are about $375 other dollars. But one day in jail credit, one day, could have saved yourself a lot of grief. 
$75 fine, $75 crime victims rights fee, and a $50 state minimum fee, $150 attorney fee. That's $350, and I'll make that due by May 15th. Okay. For five days in jail, which is the same thing you already owe because you were going to pay the other fine. Mm -hmm. The goal is always to get the fine paid, not to put people in jail. I understand that, sir. But I'm rolling in one direction and you're rolling in the other one. I'm trying to get my stuff back in order. All right. Do you have any questions for me? Uh, no, I do not. All right, I'm going to put T. George to email address. Next time you get stopped, mm -hmm. just tell them what your name is. Make life a lot easier for everybody. I know that's the first time I ever lied to an officer, and I feel bad for it. All right, you're free to go. Hey, don't be sir. All right, so uh, we're plugging along here. I've Thank got you. victim in the courtroom. Let's see who this person is. I'm not sure this is a real deal. We're all a victim of something. Good morning. Who am I speaking with? Good morning. Can you hear me? Is that is that me? No, I, uh, no, okay. Amber. It's they're listed as victim. I'm not sure if it's Mr. Poole again, uh, but we'll put him in the waiting room. Any? Uh, he's either in Japan or his mother's basement. I'm not sure who this is, um, but you're not responding. We'll remove you. The Stephanie Miller one is not anything that I have either, so I'm not. Stephanie Miller is uh, somebody. Um, let's do Amber for dose next. Uh, Mr. Gibson is here. Amber has an attorney. Um, Mr. Gibson, can you hear me? Yeah. Amber, can you hear me? Yes. Amber, I do owe you an apology. Um, you're not completely crazy. Uh, the hearing we had Friday that you were late for, uh, I originally said on the record that it was set at 2.15, but the case had to get moved because there was another case that took a long time. So it got moved to the earlier time and we sent you that notice, but apparently you didn't look at it. I think you got it. I don't know what happened to it. So anyway, that case is separate from this case. This is the time and date set for sentencing on a retail fraud charge. You pled no contest to this charge. You were on probation in Kalamazoo at the time this happened. So I set the sentence out a bit. I asked uh, Autumn Kiefer, our probation agent, to contact your agent in Kalamazoo. You're on some sort of a deferral or something. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't on probation. I was. I have not been on probation. There was a warrant. There's a warrant in Kalamazoo that I haven't been able to take care of that I've tried to take care of, um, but they're not. They're not letting me. It's a fine that I have to pay off. Like there's a couple fines that I have to pay off, which I've tried to call them. The way they're making me do it is because there's a warrant. They're, they want me to go to jail to um, to basically pay the the fines that way. But they're not booking anybody in jail right now. So they're, I have it all on recording, uh, talking to the, the jail, trying to pay my fines off and get take the warrants taken care of. And there's like two warrants. And they and there's like a middle is stuck. There's like nothing I can do. But I wasn't on probation. Okay, it was some sort of deferral status. Well, Mr. Gibson, what would you like me to know here? The defendant has a very limited criminal record. I don't believe he's got 
theory of history. I believe she took responsibility for this and she's asking for leniency. Thank you. Well, two things are wrong. She's got a bunch of baggage on her criminal history and two, she didn't take responsibility for this. She pled no contest. Um, so if that's accepting responsibility, I guess it sort of is, but she never told me what happened. Um, I had to get the report from Ms. Davis. Um, Ms. Davis, what's your thought? And this is another one you inherited. Yes. Uh, well, I looked at the reports. Um, as I recall, she had a child with her during this, which is always frustrating, I guess, um, when you bring a child into the situation and you're in, engaging in criminal behavior that, that could cause you to be arrested and the child to be placed in foster care or be traumatized uh, by the situation. So that always is bothersome uh, when there's a theft crime where they maybe bring the child as a reason to not get arrested uh, that day. She was cooperative. Uh, however, you know, this was uh, not just a, hey, I think I might go take this today. It was a planned taking a receipt that somebody else had purchased items with, going in the store, finding the items that match what the receipt says, then strolling up to the customer service desk and trying to return them as if you had bought them. And then when they didn't let her return them because the customer service desk was closed, she decided to try to push them and this child out uh, into the, the parking lot. So the fact that she's got two prior uh, retail frauds in close proximity, I think they were 2018, uh, where she was put on a deferral program that looks like she picked up another one while she was on the deferral program and then got sentenced on both of them. Uh, it speaks to, to, there's probably some issues that she's dealing with that she has not um, dealt with very well. So if she's going to keep stealing, then the, the punishment goes from just fines and costs to some jail time. Uh, so with that in mind, I'd leave it to the court's discretion how to sentence her accordingly today. Thank you. This is a difficult, as I said in my email to counsel, this is a difficult case and a difficult young woman. I don't really know what to do. I asked Autumn for a little input and Amber indicates that there's warrants for her from Kalamazoo, but they don't want to take her into custody because of the COVID circumstance. You are right, this was a planned thing. She didn't have any money, uh, but it was kind of clever. She took a receipt from July, went into the store, bought a number of the same sort of random items, shampoo and a blanket and anyway, a number of things, some electrical cords, she even asked for help for the electrical cords, then went to the service desk and said, hey, it's, it's October, can I return the stuff I bought in July? And that didn't work, and so she just attempted to push it out. There's a scene at the beginning of the movie Ocean's 14, I think, Amber, I mean, I think, uh, I don't know. At any rate, the actress portraying the role does this, tries to take something expensive in for a refund. They won't refund it, so she just walks out the store with it. And uh, that's what was going on here. Once she got stopped, she was cooperative. So I see this as a desperation move. Um, it was $120 worth of stuff. And it was a, not a real good plan, but um, it was a plan to try to get some money. And it didn't work. So the store didn't lose anything. They had her as a previous uh, retail fraud in their system. So they called the police. Um, she's living in a house that she shared with other members of her family. They moved out, left her in the house, and um, she's not on the lease. And the company that owns the house is in the process of evicting her. And the way it stands right now, she has 10 days from 
last Friday to move out. She's been there a number of months without paying any rent, maybe six or more. Um, Ms. Verdos, you're in dire straits, um, and I have some sympathy for that. What's your plan? What do you want to do? I, I, I'm in counseling. Um, I'm going to interact with Michigan and I, I just got, I've just been put on medicine, um, for anxiety and depression. And I know I'm depressed and that's part of the reason why I think I had that problem. I don't think it's a problem anymore. I really don't, I don't want to do that. Um, I know I just want my life back together and I know I've, I've been, I would pay my fines if you gave me fines. I paid off, I did pay off um, driving with license suspended recently, like $500. Um, I'm paying off the fines that I can pay off. And I, 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 I don't want to, I don't, I never gotten in any trouble until a couple of years ago. Um, well, underlying that was some opioid stuff, and I don't know where the status of that is, but there's nothing wrong with you. You're just a person trying to make their way in the world. You're depressed, and you certainly have reason to be depressed. You're being evicted. You don't have any money. You have a child. You don't have a good relationship with the child's father. You don't have a job, and... I'd be depressed too. Um, and so that's not anything irrational or unusual. Um, but I am concerned. You haven't been able to find a job. You've been living in that house since I don't know when. Have you had any luck? You seem like a bright young woman, capable, who keeps shooting herself in the foot. Do you, do you have any job prospects? Yes, I have. I, I've, every time I, I feel like I get a job, I've lost it. And that's, that's it's, I have a problem with being late. Um, I like, I've been late five minutes, not very late, like very late, but I, I have a very have a problem with being on time, it seems like, and, um, every job I've ever have gotten. That's not the only reason I've lost my job before, but I'm, I'm also in, in counseling for my, and I go to my doctor every week for, for the opioid um, abuse treatment, substance, opioid substance abuse disorder. And my job that I had just had in October um, at Aaron's, they didn't like, I tried to get my day off to be the same day every week. And my, my boss didn't want to do that. He wanted to give me random days. So there was days where I had to go to my weekly appointments and he didn't like, he didn't like that. And, and then they also had gotten um, secondhand contact with somebody who had COVID. My daughter's father, um, my older daughter's father had contracted COVID. And I went in to work to tell him, you know, what does he want me to do? Because my doctor just told me I needed to be 14 days, you know, um, quarantine, and he didn't like that. He, he fired me right on the spot. I even tried to fight that. I tried to call, like, all the, like, you know. Well, that was, that was October. Have you looked for any right. work since then? No. I'm scared I'm going to lose my job again. I, I, I honestly, it, hurt, it, it hurts me every time I lose my job. It makes me feel like less of a person, and I just, I'm scared to get a job. I, I don't want to lose it. Have you made any provisions to move out of the house? I've been calling. Yes, I'm. I'm contacting like uh, HRI and um, Keystone Place. I'm waiting on calls back from them. Um, I'm contacting every single every every place I can. Well, you waited way too long. I mean, you were in the place when the earlier eviction started, and again, you were what was known as a tenant at sufferance. It wasn't your house. They left. They left you there. No one's paid the rent in months, and you were just riding it, I guess, as long as you could, and now the clock is ticking, and I'm concerned about what you're gonna just be out on the street. You don't have any money. 
You have warrants for your arrest from Kalamazoo because you owe money. You don't have a job. You're about to be homeless in about seven days. Um, I don't know what to do with you. The property here was recovered. There's no loss. You're barred from the Walmart store. I'm going to give you a fine that you don't have the ability to pay. Right now, any money that you have, you need to use to find a place to live. Um, now, you had some Kalamazoo connections. Where is your family? Um, I just... My, I have, I just started talking to my mom again, um, but she's not a very good, um, she is out there and um, that's who my, my stepdad, who I was living here with, who, who was going through a divorce with my mom last, last year. And I felt like he, I, I, don't know. I, I the reason why I don't, I didn't, I waited this long, your honor, is because um, I was talking to the landlord and I was going through the process at a community action agency. And that's why I wanted the lawyer from um, the legal aid for this because I I waited that long because we were going through the process and I got approved even for the $3,000 for the eviction diversion program. He told me, the, the landlord, um, Mike um, Callis, from from the uh, Swan Properties told me to apply for the eviction diversion program. So the whole time he, I was talking to him in December and January, I was thinking that as long as I got this money, which I did get approved, the only thing was is that I needed something with my my name on the lease. But he had told me that he would went through the process before. So when he is telling me to apply for it, I figured I would get it. And I did Well, yeah, get you it. were getting two different versions but the, uh, the, the first of all, they, the, your stepfather tried to evict you. He was still paying the utilities, but no one was paying the rent. And you're not on the lease. And I don't, I believe what you told me, this guy gave you this information. But they're not going to rent a $1,400 a month standalone house for you. And you're not on the lease. So now you're in a tough spot. You do have the right to appeal this, but that clock is ticking. Um, what I'm going to do, Deborah and Paul, is kick this can down the road. I'm concerned about those open warrants in Kalamazoo County, and I'm concerned about the fact that she's about to be homeless. It looks like there's a warrant request for dangerous drugs out of Battle Creek as well. Yes, I saw the Calhoun County thing in there, and I'm not sure what the status of it is. There's a warrant uh, request? I thought it was done, that Battle Creek was done, but I'm not yes. sure. That's what I thought. And I was waiting on a court date that I haven't received anything about. Well, uh, because I'm, I was supposed to be doing, I, I, I had a, I have a lawyer in that case and I, I didn't plea anything. That's what I was supposed to go to the plea. The plea, um, the next one was some, some, the plea. Well, your life is very disorganized and for a combination of reasons, but I'm going to continue this to May 17th at 11 o'clock, about two months from now, and see what's going on with these. Thank you. I'm going to follow up on the Kalamazoo and Calhoun County warrants. If I order you to pay a fine, it's money that you can't use to find a place to live. Um, it's not the kind of thing I would put you in jail for necessarily. Uh, but let's see how you're doing by May 17th. When you get a new address, please mm -hmm. advise the court of that address so we can give mail to you. I sent you some mail at the Tamarack address and you said you didn't get it. I just so, got it late. I got it late, like the day of, or the it was like the day of. The mail doesn't come till after. Um, we, we had, well, I just hadn't checked it, I guess, at that time um, uh, because I uh, thought it was two o'clock. So. All right. If you do move, please give us your address. All okay. right. You're good to go. Thank you. Have a good day. All right. Thank you, Paul. Thank you.
All right, uh, Ms. Harlan and then Ms. Condi. Uh, we don't have Carly Harmon. We had another person on the fee that we lost and victim I don't think was legit. Uh, Ms. Harlan, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. All right, this is file 21130ST. Uh, you got charged with driving suspended. You got suspended for not paying a ticket on January 11th. The ticket was from sometime last summer and the suspension hit your license on January 11th. You got this ticket on January 16th. You were on a payment plan for the earlier ticket and you didn't pay it. So your license got suspended. You're also on a payment plan for disturbing the peace charge and you haven't made any payment on that since November. So you're kind of in the same boat. You've got payment plans and you're not paying on them. Um, so what do you want me to do? Um, honestly, I plan on paying it off when I get the stimulus. I haven't been not paying it like on purpose with the whole no transportation thing. It's really rough getting a job. And I actually was going to be working at Adapt, but the homes are out of Sturgis and I live in Sturgis. So that didn't work out. And I just had an interview. They call it Ruhu or Rahu. Rehau. Ray how in Sturgis that I'm waiting for manpower to call me and let me know today if I start there. All right. Well, this suspension happened five days. This arrest happened five days after your suspension. I'm just going to treat it as a hundred dollar fine, $75 crime victims rights fee and a $50 state minimum fee. That's two twenty five. I wish everybody would get a big stimulus check and pay all their fines off. Are you expecting a tax refund? Um, yeah, but I need to track down my W-2s because I had them sent to my friends and she had them sent back. Well, I get on that. I'm going to give you the same day, May 15th. Or four days. Let's see if you, you've got the other ticket that's no insurance, I think, and the disturbing the peace, you haven't paid anything on since November. So hopefully you can pay all this off by May 15th. If you can't pay it, I want you to contact me, but so far I gave you payment plans and you're not paying. So let's see if you can get a tax refund, win the lotto, or get your uh, stimulus check um all right miss harlan you're good to go do you have any questions um no nope. thank you are you still at the baroque road address yes that's my mailing address all right is there an apartment number no all right we'll send you that information you're free to go all right thank you all right miss condy can you hear me Ms. Dean, can you hear me? Yes, I can. All right, I can't see you, but I do recognize your voice. This is Judge Middleton. I'm here at the court in Centerville. Um, I recognize you too. <laughs> uh, this is a three hours ordinance case. You pled guilty to. Um, driving suspended and a paraphernalia charge <clears throat> you're kind of in the same boat you've got other fines that you owe i think um <clears throat> are you still living on at bear lake yes and i also paid 75 on my fines and i got i went and got um a, another um a plan started and it's ten dollars a month and it starts um on zero four I don't know if I'll live long enough to get all that paid off. 
Uh, you've got a bunch of old stuff, um, but these weren't exactly the crime of the century. Yeah, you're paying on a open intox. You're paying on a booking fee, another booking fee. You got some old stuff from way back when. Nine. In another driving suspended. Another booking fee. I hate booking fees. Anyway, you're no arch criminal, but you're struggling. Um, on the. Did they take you to jail for this? I can't remember. Just give you the ticket. No. They just gave me the ticket. Where were you going? I don't remember what you told me. I was going back to my girlfriend's house. Well, you can't drive. You I know. Understand? And I'm not anymore. And the driving suspended is $100. Part of payment plan. Are you going to get a stimulus check? Yes, I am. I should have it today or tomorrow. Well, I'd like you to pay these off. I plan on doing that, that sir. And you need to stop driving. On I, the paraphernalia charge, I'm going to put the fine in there. That's a three hours ordinance. Three hours gets the money. A portion of the fine money. I'm going to order a $75 fine, $75 crime victims rights fee, and a $50 state minimum fee. That's $200 or three days as part of a payment plan. So from these two cases, you owe $300. I'd really like you to pay these off. I'm not so worried about those old booking fees. But if you get a stimulus check, I would really like you to um, pay it. That's the first thing I'll do. All right. Do you have any questions? No, sir. All right. Mystique, I've known you since you were about 17. How about if you don't come see me for a while? That would be wonderful. <laughs> I don't mind if I see you in Myers or something, but how about if you don't come in here? Uh, I'm going to try really hard not to see you anymore. <laughs> I'm not driving anymore. All right. You're free to go. All right. Thank you. Deborah, have we, have one last, all right, we have one last case, which is Carly May Harmon. Um, it is filed 20425SM. She has an open warrant for her arrest, I believe. Yes, Your Honor, uh, I saw that as well. File. So I'm going to do a, let me see if I have a phone number for her. Let's see what she's doing. failed to appear. I attempted to call the last known number without success and she has an open warrant for her arrest. Now she'll have two. Um, has open warrant in file 20259SD. Uh, it's 21259SD. That's what it says on mine anyway. Okay, 21, all right. Sorry, I'm a year behind. 
picture. Was, it was in December, so I think it, about, it happened in December. Think about 20 years behind, but uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, no bond C Josh. We had some interesting hairstyles today. I'm not in a position to criticize anybody else's hairstyle. But the colors were quite vibrant. Vibrant, that's a good word. Yes. All right, Josh, well, thank you. I will. All right, thank you. We'll uh, close this proceeding. Thank you. All right, we'll end our live feed at this time. We do have a full afternoon of landmark tenant proceedings starting at 115, but that